On a breakfast this morning, experts have raised alarm over the growing counterfeiting of illicit products and trafficking in the country. It's saying it has become a global security concern, pretending danger to humans and animals. We'll look at the situation ahead on the program. And of course, the Qatar 2022 World Cup is a go. Some matches have come and gone. The first round of matches with quite a few upsets. So we'll look at those, including Argentina versus Saudi Arabia. And in Of the Press this morning, we'll be taking a look at what the papers have to say, bringing you in depth analysis with a guest analyst ahead on the program. We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We, we would have to sincerely apologize to you, our, our viewers, for bringing the program beyond uh, the time stipulated. We apologize for that. But we'll start with a trending segment this morning. And of course, um, looking at what has been generating comments on the social space. And this one uh, uh, has to do with uh, um, a, a very, very serious situation. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency um, seizing a certain amount of uh, illicit drugs. Um, it always, always, always will be a news because of the bus, the, the record busts by the NDLEA in recent times. And you can see, you know, footages of officials of the Nigeria's National Drug Law Enforcement Agency uh, combing the bushes to see, you know, uh, to do their job. Well, this time it was in Katsina State in northern Nigeria where they made uh, this seizure. Um, it's quite, quite huge. 1.5 tons of illicit drugs. Um, and of course, uh, they also arrested 993 persons in Katsina State. This is between the period uh, from November 10, uh, 2021 to November 23. All right. And this is what the state commander is saying now. The, the, what, what got people talking is a huge number of persons who have been arrested, 993. Um, and of course, uh, the state commandant of the NDLEA was given a review uh, of his activities in the state um, to newsmen uh, under the period that we just mentioned. He took over the command in November 10 as the 16th state commander and after an overview of the drug situation, he says, looking at the arrests and the seizures, the age and gender, he said they decided to tackle the situation in the state using evidence-based approach uh, in terms of substance use, and they also intensified the raids and operations, patrol and surveillance. Um, and this approach, he's saying, has yielded positive results uh, with nine, almost, almost 1,000 arrests, 993. Now, he gave a breakdown of uh, the number of uh, the demography, if you want to call it, of, of this number. It, it comprises 977 males and 16 females. Um, and of course, he also gave a breakdown of uh, drug seized within this period. Listen to this 1,555,446 kilograms of drugs, made up of 1,400,000, uh, no, 1, rather, uh, 1, 473,795 kilograms of uh, cannabis sativa. All right, that should be the popular one. Uh, amongst all drugs. Should we call it the king of, of, of these drugs? Um, Igbo is what some people call it in this part of the world, Igbo. In some places they call it we. Um, but if you go down to my city of Calabar, uh, they call it uh, uh, Ikong Ekpo. <laughs> they call it Ikong Ekpo. If you know a Calabar person, go and ask them what they mean by, we mean by Ikong Ekpo. You know, so, I mean, no surprises that you had more of the uh, uh, the drugs that they seized, uh, the 1.5 tons they seized, being made up of cannabis sativa. Uh, in fact, some some people are saying you know it should be legalized, like uh, Bob Marley said, legalize it and now advertise. Um, indeed, in some countries, presidential candidates campaign on saying they will make it uh, legal. Uh, but for now, if you're caught with uh, Igbo or we or Ikong Ekpo. Um, as my Calabar people call it, you have yourself to blame. Okay, you have yourself to blame. They also seized to 
kilograms of psychotropic substances. These are the ones that are new. These are the ones that are mixed with things. These are the ones that are chemically uh, um, um, enhanced. I hear things like um, Colorado, Arizona. Uh, I don't know if we hear, we have New York City somewhere. There's some drugs that, you know, um, are psychotropic. And so this is different from the natural ones that we know. Um, also, cough syrup. They seized 92.95 liters of cup syrup with codeine. You know, never knew. Years ago, I never knew that people take cup syrup to get high. I mean, it's, it's just crazy what, what, what people can do. We have a problem, you know, and we need to agree uh, we, we have a problem. So this is what he said. And the, the demographics, uh, demography is quite interesting. 93% of the suspects arrested are between the ages of 16, 16 and 40 years. All right, 93% of those arrested are between the ages of 16 and 40 years. So you might just think, oh, you need somebody as old as me. No. You might be seeing people who are even less than 16 years, if we were to, to look at that, less than 16 years, who are into these uh, illicit drugs. And this is a problem we need to tackle in our society because there is a nexus between illicit drug use, drug abuse, and crime, criminality in a society. You know, it's very important. It's very important. I mean, 16-year-old, smoking Igbo. Man, it's, it's, it's crazy. Okay? Um, so, so, according to him, the NDLEA also does not just arrest. They, they counsel and rehabilitate. And according to Bashir, he says that the Drug Demand Reduction Unit of the Command has been able to counsel and rehabilitate 76 uh, people. Um, four of the people who had substance use disorder are from Niger Republic. You know, so uh, close to 800 persons have undergone uh, brief intervention at their center. Uh, it, it is a problem that needs to be looked into. We need to have a strategy. You know, um, in the United States of America, I'm not citing the United States of America because they're the best country in the world or because they're better and anything. But um, this is a country where you have a system that works amongst other countries in the world. So we can always borrow relief from them. Some people campaigned and said, see, if you elect me president, I'm going to tackle what we call the opioid crisis. So they, they, they sat down and said, we have an opioid crisis. Donald Trump, when he was president, had his son-in-law um, in charge of tackling the opioid crisis. So what is the strategy, apart from arresting uh, people who are found with these illicit drugs, what is the national strategy to tackle this illicit drug, illegal substances crisis we have in a country? Musicians are singing about loud and they are, they are eulogizing it, you know, and glorifying these drugs, uh, singing about Igbo, in the music, so it's almost like a common thing today. If you, if the NDLA arrests anyone, you see a whole social media will go berserk. Why are you arresting him? Is it not just, you know? So it's it's normalized now. We have a crisis on our hands, and we need to come up with a strategy, aside from law enforcement, to tackle it. That being said, we'll take a pause now, and we'll be back with a look at the papers. Stay with us. <laughs> 